Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tony, and I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids. And it is July 25th, and this has got to be one of the latest possible times I have ever finished ordering curriculum, but I'm done. Normally I get this done a lot earlier in the year. It just didn't happen this year and it took forever to be able to devote time to deciding what we're gonna do. Do you guys struggle with that? Some people I know like they use this curriculum every year so there's no deciding. If you're somebody like me who likes new things or likes to switch things up, it takes a lot of research and time and effort plus your children grow every year and you know now i've got a high schooler and a junior higher and an upper elementary and a lower elementary and there's a lot that goes into it so anyway i am finally done and i'm ready to reveal to you guys what we're using this year our curriculum picks for 2024 to 2025 so this video is going to be focusing on group subjects if you're curious how we're doing group subjects with four kids ages ranging from almost nine to about 15 and you want to hear what we're doing, then stay tuned. So if you guys have followed me over the years, I have changed lots of curriculum, lots of different times. I have pretty much the same homeschooling style. I'm very eclectic in the way I homeschool, which just means I'm a mix of stuff. I like some Charlotte Mason. I like some traditional. I like a mixture of things. I like to mix it all up. So one major thing that I have always told homeschool moms is if you have a somewhat large family or even if you just have two kids, I would still recommend the same thing. And that is to do group subjects whenever you can. It has just now started to pour rain, which is fun. So sorry if you can hear that. So group subjects has always really been a huge thing in our homeschool. I love doing family style group subjects for at least a couple things. There have been times where we did pretty much everything together. I really love that, especially I'm seeing even more so now as I have a 15 year old who's gonna be a sophomore this year, just still wanting to have that time together. I can see more and more, at least the way we're doing homeschooling, she won't be with us for a whole lot more. She, a lot of her stuff is independent. So I wanna do what I can together. Some of the group subjects that I'm talking about today actually are just with my three younger ones. And I think I have, so I'll have like a, maybe three things that we'll all do together. And then a couple things that will just be my three youngers, just cause that's the way it is now. I'm so excited about it. But let me tell you this too. I have in the last few years been a mom that does a lot and I usually end up taking on too much. And I, I'm like, oh, I like that. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, I wanna do that in my homeschool. And I add all these different things into our homeschool. And then the reality after a month of homeschooling is I don't really have time to do all that stuff. Like we don't have to, the time in our day unless you want an eight hour day to do all of that. So I am simplifying this year, I really am. And I kind of feel like this weight lifted off of me because I don't wanna to have to do too much. And a lot of times stuff that I do wanna do takes a back seat because I have all these other things in there that are unnecessary. Fun sometimes, but unnecessary. So let me just go over our list of things that we're gonna be doing. It's not a super long list. So first thing is history. So we have been, you're not gonna be surprised about this at all. We've been using BiblioPlan for many years now and I love BiblioPlan. So that is what we are using for history. Now, the interesting thing is, if I don't know if any of you follow me closely enough to know which year we should be on, if you do, you may be surprised by this. We have done, it's a four year cycle. So they have ancient times, medieval times, early modern, and then modern. So we've gone through all four. Then, you know, you go back and you start over again. So last year we did ancient times. So this year we should be doing medieval times. But you know what? The two years that we did early modern and modern, I feel it was a hard, weird time in our life with different health. You guys know a little bit about what we've been going on. Um, my life update video, I'll put it above here. And if you didn't get to see that, but that just gave a little bit, a little glimpse into our life the last few years and things have been hard. So those couple years, I feel like we did get a little bit gypped because there were so many distractions with my husband's health and with him going on disability and just life being hard. It was hard to balance things. We didn't finish 
either of those textbooks. We, which, you know, we rarely ever finish a full textbook, but we didn't. So this year I was like, okay, oh, we have to do medieval because you know, that's next on the list. And then I had this like epiphany where I was like, do I have to do medieval? I know it's next, but to be totally honest, that's probably one of my least favorite. And I feel like for the kids, because I don't feel like they got everything. We didn't cover all the wars, all the important things that are really relevant to our life in America, the founding of America, all that stuff, and um, all the things that have happened since then. I don't feel like we did it justice, so I decided that we're gonna do early modern again this year. Wow! And I feel so good about it. And that's the beauty of homeschooling. You can switch it up if you want to do two years of modern times or you want to do two years of ancient times or whatever you want to do, you can do that. So I, I love that. I actually kind of get excited when I have these like, that's the beauty of homeschooling kind of moments. And that's what this was. So anyway, I won't talk about history for that long. Since we've done this before, I already have some of the books, some of the stuff today I won't have to show you, but this is uh, what the textbook looks like for early modern days that my younger three will do, and we will be reading it together. Um, it's an awesome book. I will do another, I'll do a video coming up soon once I have all my Biblioplan stuff, and I'll do a flip through to show you guys what the stuff looks like. But this is the textbook that my younger three, who are in third grade, sixth grade, and eighth grade, they'll be doing that. Um, I have the Cool History for Littles. This I will probably just do with my son. It's just like questions that you can read out loud. And then I'm going to order, or I already ordered this, just not in yet. The cool history for middles I got for my sixth grader and my eighth grader. So they have that, which has, um, I don't have a copy of one right here, but it's got similar questions, a little bit harder maybe, but they've got spaces for you to write your answers in. So they prefer to have that where we did this one year where I was like, oh, just write it on notebook paper, but they really like writing in the book. So they both are gonna be getting one of those. I have the timeline that we started a couple years ago and we didn't finish that year. So we got to about week 15, I think. So we have a lot of stuff. It's got these little colored, let me find one here that's full. It's got all these little colored pictures of events or people in history. And as you talk about it, you cut it out in the back of the book. It's actually provided to you. You cut it out in the back of the book and then you glue it in. So we only did about half. Uh, I think we just stopped doing the timeline. I think we did do more of the history, but we only did half the timeline. So we're going to finish that timeline this year. So, um, and just kind of go over the ones that are already glued in. And then I have the family guide also that has some extras. If I choose to do it, if I don't do it, then who cares? I don't have to, but they do have a lot of reading books. So for our read alouds or books that I want to assign to the kids, they have an awesome guide. I will do a flip through of this, but they have an awesome guide in here that is specific to the grade or level of your child, age of your child. It's got reading prompts in here. It's got Bible stuff in here. It's got all kinds of stuff. This is great. So I've got this too. So family style, that's the stuff we'll be doing together. Now, my oldest, who is going to be in 10th grade, is doing early modern biblio plan, but she is going to be using the high school book, which we didn't use last year because our co-op used the remember the days. But, um, which was fine, but the I've talked to the owner of Biblioplan. I was like, do I should I use the the high school book? I've heard it's like hard and it's heavy, and she's like, I honestly am so sad when people don't use the high school textbook because they're missing out on so much meat and so much more. It just goes so much more in depth. So she sold me. I'm like, okay, I got it. I will I will use it because I figured she'd, you know. I don't know. You're like, well, if, as long as you're buying the book, do they care what level you buy? She really was like, I wish more high schoolers would use the high school book. So that's what we're going to do this year. And we'll test it out and I'll let you guys know how it works, but I'm excited. So um, this is what that looks like. If there's two books that um, that come for the high school book. I also got her the audio book. That is something that, that my kids really enjoyed last year was listening to the audio book. And because she's going to be doing hers on her own, because it is different and I want to kind of come together and talk about stuff. I'll figure out a way to 
bring everybody together. So even though she'll be reading on her own, maybe we can come together to discuss questions or something like that. I also ordered her a similar book, but it's cool history for advanced. So hers will be a little bit harder questions and things like that, but everybody will be doing the same thing. So I'm really excited. Hey, so the next thing that we're gonna be doing family style group subjects is science for my younger three. My daughter will be using something else and I will talk about that when I have done my, uh, what my, my 10th grader is gonna be using, her curriculum picks. I'll do that in a separate video, what she's gonna be using. So that is one reason why I'm so big on doing group subjects when you can, because I really think you can do it all the way up through eighth grade. I have an eighth grader this year and she will be doing group subjects with us. And I'm like, do it as long as you can. Because once you get into high school, you've got to do the biology and the chemistry and all of those things, which you're not going to do as a family. You know, I think my other kids might enjoy sitting in on the um, dissections and on some of the experiments and things like that if, if they're done with their work and they can, you know, come over and do it and, and have the time to do it. They'll probably enjoy that. But actually doing it together, she needs to be on her own this year. So um, I'll share with you guys later what she's doing. But the younger three will be doing the good and the beautiful science and which I love. And, um, I, uh, yeah, I'm so excited about it. They have a lot of things to choose from. So the girls and I, my son, I, I already knew which one of the ones that I thought actually two of the ones that we chose, I knew he'd be super excited about, but I want to make sure my girls were on the same page. So they helped me pick. So we are going to be doing I don't have them in yet, but I'll show you guys once we get them in. But we're gonna be doing Machines in Motion, which is one that the girls thought would be pretty interesting. I think my son is going to absolutely love it because that's kind of how his mind works. And I feel like him learning how these things work is just gonna be so cool for him. And I really wanted him to be more involved. We got the Machines in Motion, and I also got the workbook that'll that'll um, that for the girls, for my, my sixth grader and my eighth grader, they'll both have the workbook that they'll do on their own. I'm not adding that to my son for that because that'll just be an extra headache and it's just not worth it for him. I don't think he needs it. The second one we're doing is called Health and the Human Mind. And I'm really excited about this one. It's very interesting because a lot of times I feel like health is more about the body. When you see health, it's like talking about the different things, which we've done human anatomy. We did do the human body before with the good and the beautiful. And at co-op, they've done the human body before. This is the human mind. And especially a lot of the stuff that uh, we have learned in the last couple of years with my husband with uh, the neurological problems he's had since his uh, illness started, it's been interesting. It's something that I knew nothing about, my kids knew nothing about, and um, we've learned a lot. And I was like, this would be so cool for us to really understand the inner workings of the mind and the body and how all that works together. So I'm actually really excited about that. That one, I just got the girls a notebook to work in. I'm not gonna have my son do a notebook for that one either. So he'll just listen to the lesson, do the experiments with us, and then the girls will go off and do their notebooks. We're only doing three science units some people, I think people do anywhere from three to five. One year I ordered five and I had two that I didn't finish because we just didn't get to it. So I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do it once a week or twice a week, but um, I'm, however that works to, to spread those out throughout the year, we're gonna do three of them. So the third one is paleontology, which the girls were actually really interested in and I know my son's gonna be interested in it because we've never actually studied dinosaurs. I think years ago when we did Heart of Dakota, my oldest had a couple books that was in there that they studied about um, dinosaurs, but nobody else has since then. So I think that'll be cool. It looks like a really, really good book. So I did get the workbook for him for that because it looks really interesting. And I think he'll actually enjoy, you know, with the dinosaurs and stuff like that. I think he'll enjoy that. And then the girls got one too. So they got, there's different levels. So there's a three through six workbook guide, and then there's a seventh and eighth workbook guide or student text or whatever they call it. Um, so I got my older one, the seven through eighth, and then the younger two got the three through six. So it's just more geared towards their age. Makes more sense. It'll be a little harder for the eighth grader, a little bit more work for her to do. So I'm excited about those three. I think that'll be really fun, super fun. So the last three things that we'll be doing as a family will be everybody together. We use verse cards from, we've been doing this for years and I think you're probably supposed to do one set of verse cards 
per year, I would assume, but guess what? It's taken us a lifetime to get through all these, which is fine. But, um, so we are still working on these. I've, this is just a little recipe box and I stick the card up here and we work on verses and we'll have like a verse for the week. So this is with Simply Charlotte Mason. I said this last year, just to give you guys, I, just to give you guys encouragement and me encouragement. Cause a lot of times I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not good at memorizing Bible verses. And uh, I feel like sometimes my, especially my oldest, a lot of times said she's not good at memorizing Bible verses, but I know that they can. And at VBS, this happened last year because I just saw my video the other day because I was looking for something and I was like, oh, I said that last year. My youngest girl who is, she's going into sixth grade, so she's 11 right now. She pretty much always, and the other girls used to when they were younger too, always win the grand prize for VBS because they memorize all the Bible verses. They give them a full sheet, like front and back. I can't remember. I think it's like um, 20, I don't know, say 26 verses or something like that, that they've got four days to say as many as they want. Some kids say a couple. My son said two, I think for the week. My daughter always says all of them and she always wins <laughs> because not everybody says all of them. Anyway, I, we're talking four days. So I think it was like the first day she said like 12 or 13. The second day she said 12. She doesn't know all these already. Like she knew some of them already from the past, but some of them she just worked on during the day, memorized it, was able to say it that night. It's crazy. And then she had three longer ones or something and two more, whatever, however that works out. And she said all of her verses in four days. So that's why I keep going back to this. And I'm like, we're going to work on these verses. And I think doing it as a family is a lot more fun. And whether you, you can like write it on the chalkboard, I have it over there on a shelf, but just making sure we make time to do that every single day. And so my oldest will be a, a part of that too. And we're just going to keep working on verses because I need to work on some. I am not, I, I'm, I feel like I can just say my memory is bad and I don't, not good at memorizing anymore, but that's, there's no excuse. So we need to keep working on it. So, um, so we will continue to do our memory verses. Uh, I also, the reason I'm backing off on all of the extras, like we have enjoyed some of the extras that we've done in the past, you know, like doing poetry and doing art and doing health together. We did like a hymn study, like all those things are great. And I really did enjoy them. But I'm backing off of all that because I really want to make sure I have time to do read alouds every day. And that was something that we didn't have time to do a lot of times because a lot of the other stuff I put in our morning basket. And sometimes if your morning basket is too full, you're not going to, there's stuff that's not going to get done. And for us, it's almost always read alouds. So I'm going to pick a handful of read alouds for us to do this year. And I would like for all of us, my for my oldest down and my youngest to sit and do those together with us. So I'm going to make that a priority. You've probably been hearing that for me for years, but uh, I'm not going to give up. So. so the last thing for family subjects, I haven't bought yet. And I was hoping you guys could help me with this because there was one that I was sold on. And then when I saw that it was a an online thing where you have to print your own, we just have a lame printer and I don't like to buy stuff that I have to print myself. So I want to buy a book that like gets mailed to me and then I have it. So I want to do an election unit study. And I had found one from this one place, Daily Skill Building, and it looked really good. I'd heard about it and I was like, oh, that's perfect. We need to do that because it's an election year. Anyway, I didn't like it. Once I went to click on it to buy it, it said it's a downloadable whatever PDF and you print it yourself. I don't want that. So if you know of a really good unit study on the election process, let me know in the comments because I would like to order something and do that in, I don't know, October, November and work that in. And I'm trying to get the kids more involved this year. We just listened to the presidential address last night and we were watching Trump last week or was that two weeks ago when the assassination attempt happened. Like they're living this history with us. They were actually sitting there in the room with us and we were watching it live and it was crazy. And I feel like I want them to continue to be involved in this process because they've asked a lot of questions lately about um, different things about how this works and, you know, the president or the vice president and how the election, I want to make sure that they understand all that. And I haven't really done that yet. So that is my goal for this year is to find a really good election unit study. So if you have one that you would recommend, let me know. 
and I'll figure that out. Otherwise I'll probably, I could probably find something and throw it together, but I, I would love to have something that's already put together and ready for me. That is pretty much it for our family subjects. And um, I am going to, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna tell you, I, I feel like it's nice to have the books with me when I share like, oh, she's doing this and this kid's doing this. Uh, but I don't have my books yet because I just literally ordered everything um, within the last two days. So um, anyway, in the next week, two weeks or so, all those videos will be coming out about what I chose for each kid. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those when they come out. And if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'm really excited for the school year. I, um, at, at one point, a couple months ago, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to homeschool. And now, you know, we're almost here. So I am really looking forward to it and really excited. Yeah. So I hope that you are too. And if you're not ready for your school year yet, that's fine. Like I said, I just decided on a couple things last night. So it's okay to be behind because there is no really behind with homeschooling, right? So just give yourself a pat on the back and you're okay. So thanks for being here and I will see you guys next time. Bye.